Top five deer we didn't kill. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs>
being able to survive in these environments. And I, I genuinely thought the stars were aligning for us on this year. Yeah. And it was just like kill man, Charlie just, next next year. Kill yeah. two twenty. Just you but, know, it's it's all the details. It's it's this far away of when it happens or doesn't happen for you. Yeah. So all right, that's the story of Tyson in a nutshell. Who's up next? That was over three minutes, by the way. Yeah. yeah well. Yeah, that's partly our fault. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll bring it back even earlier than that. I guess a few years earlier, back in 2015 with Poseidon, which I don't have any oh. any footage. You didn't. You know, I didn't know you were going to say this. Him. No, I didn't forget about him, but I didn't know you were going to say this story. Yeah, I mean, I don't have a, any footage. We weren't filming at the time, but I have a bunch of trail cam pictures. And this was the year the year before you killed Charlie. And it was kind of the first year that I had start, I started branching out and getting new permission outside of that first spot that we got. And it was also the first year that we found kudzu. We found a buck growing out in a kudzu pasture in the summer. And I think, I, I want to say it was the first like confirmed 200 inch deer that we ever got on camera. I, it, it was for sure the first 200 we ever hunted. Yeah. I remember the phone call to this day, almost word for word that you gave me when you first got I will got kill you if you it share was, this dude, picture. It was, <laughs> was this him? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And he, so he actually had a big drop time. He broke off. Yeah. So he would have been, I mean, you know, even Somebody bigger. just sent me this picture this week. No way. Saying, did you ever hunt this deer? That's it's like 10 years ago. And I was like, no, but I think Drew did. That's yeah, okay. Why. So he got picture of this deer. The phone call I got, it was like, he hasn't sent it to me. Wouldn't show me the picture. And he's like, Lee. Like first, I think you did say you'd kill me, but you were like, our, <laughs> for real, our friendship is on the line. This was during right? a time when like, we, we were, still weren't sharing everything and like- We were very yeah. competitive. Competitive, yeah. Well, was, yeah. well we, so, we all were very competitive yeah. at that point in time because we also didn't know who all was really hunting in that area. Right. Um, we knew a lot of us were, but there were still a handful of folks that were hunting in there. Yeah. You 100% put our friendship on the line. <laughs> Like, <laughs> it, well, we were, kind of, we were honestly like starting to kind of stake our claim in certain areas of yeah. Atlanta, and I had started kind of branching out on that side, and then you had gone somewhere else. And so I was like, I don't know if Lee has spots over here or if he's going to come <laughs> try to get spots over here. So I was like, you better not it was come over here. Probably a good call to put the friendship yeah. online. So, anyways, the deer actually ended up scoring 204 inches. Um, neighbor killed him, I think, the last week of the season in January. Kind of a sketchy situation, mm. won't really go into that, but I hunted the deer 67 times that season. It was it was really the first year that I like dedicated a whole season to one deer. Yeah. And I was on a pretty big property so I could move around a little bit. I think it was like 20 acres. And he was on camera a lot. Like I had him daylighting a good bit. You yeah, were you, you were in his hideout. Yeah, you, were, you, were, you were in on him. Yeah, yeah, and you couldn't bait back then, but I could you could be two hundred yards away from a bait pile. So I'd run a camera on bait on one side of the property and hunt kind of on the other. And basically, I was just kind of going back and forth, back and forth. I tried to hunt in the kudzu patch for a little bit, but you couldn't really get in there without blowing deer out. And that cat and mouse game just went on for the literally the entire season. But you had him in front of you, didn't you? No, I never. He came in on you. No, not. Dude, Poseidon? yes, he, yes. Oh shoot, you're right. <laughs> Duh. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I, I remember. I forgot. He, about he wiped that up from his memory. It's like, he, <laughs> yeah, he, he looks so defeated. You were on the hillside, on the, hill side, on the right. ground, okay. and he came in. So I saw him twice in person. Once was at night. I was going in there to feed, and he was ten yards in front of my truck. And then I went. In, I I kind of like got in late one day, and I wanted to hunt a different side of the property. Set up like a makeshift ground blind on this hill overlooking this little like pond bottom. And there was a ton of rubs in this pond bottom, and like broad daylight, uh, it was like two hours before dark. He he comes across, like comes and crosses the pond, and comes out of the wood line looking straight up at me, and just is like staring me down. And I I don't think I ever came to full draw, um, but I was just sitting there like this for like five minutes, and he was just watching, watching, facing watching, you. facing me, and he eventually just spun around and went back the other way. I totally forgot about that. I did. I, I didn't. <laughs> so yeah, and so anyways, I ended up putting a bunch of like all day sits in on that deer, and it was just a brutal season. And it was coming off of like a few years where you were just laying them down on that first that first property that we got, and it was it's kind of like a point where I got super frustrated by the end of that year. I remember getting the call. You actually got the call first that our buddy had killed him, mm -hmm. and uh, 
I was just like, I don't even, I don't even want to hear it. Like, I don't want to talk about it. I'm, I'm I, yeah, you, you oh. were, you were definitely very defeated of that yeah. deer being dead. I mean, you dedicated your your entire season to that. Mm-hmm. I remember getting that call and not even I, wanting to I, tell you. I, yeah, I just, I, yeah. I, I was, I was very bummed for but you. It turned, it kind of turned out to be. I think there's always like a, a bigger planet in That's play. Right. Always. A bigger that, pla- wait, a bigger planet? <laughs> a bigger planet. I heard, I heard a planet. <laughs> this is a bigger planet. <laughs> and so that was the year that you found Charlie in the Kudzu Pass. You yeah. had started hunting him, but couldn't really go, get on him until like late in the year. Mm-hmm. And I was so frustrated and tired of like hunting from that season that I was like, you know what? Forget this. I'm going to buy a camera and dedicate my next year to filming to you filming. hunt Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's essentially how sequence started was like just the insane frustration from Poseidon. If you would have yeah. still been hunting Poseidon that year, I mean, yeah, we would not have filmed the Charlie yeah. deal and none of this would have happened. Mm-hmm. So I, I have a great bigger plan to that play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that deer was just crazy, just crazy mass points everywhere. And yeah. we actually ended up, right, I guess the guy that killed him ended up aging him at like four and a half. Which is crazy. Four inches. Yeah. I mean, you're notorious for saying, oh, this deer, you know, maybe if he made it another year or two, and he's talking like 180 inch deer. I've rolled the dice pretty heavily on some deer, yeah. Yeah. But that's one of them that like, just think of what another year or right. two would do, and he would have probably been the state record. Possibly. Yeah. Jay, he would have beat you. <laughs> <laughs> so we're at Poseidon? Done? Done. Your turn. Uh. I know Reliving this I know sometimes which one you're hurts. About okay. and it's brutal. Got great footage though. N- yeah, we, we, we do have great footage. great footage. So, back in 2016 is when I first saw this deer. It was a mainframe 10. Didn't get a lot of pictures that year of him, but saw him on the hoof. Um, come 2017, and he was an absolute hammer. Um, started hunting them. My buddy Spence from Colorado actually drew on nine lives. His elbow hit the tree and bounced his arrow off of the rest. Really? And, I didn't know that. Yeah, and nine lives bounced off. <laughs> so nine lives has a name for a reason. Uh, numerous encounters. Um, he just always skirted me every single time. Got in his bedroom come 2018. You and I were actually in the ground blind, and it was dark. He ended out coming in. Yep, I remember we that. Could, we didn't have enough light. Literally in that same sit, I get a text from the landowner that we, I lost permission. It would have happened at that spot too, like one hundred percent. He was coming I in mean, like every day, yeah, multiple yeah. times a day. And, and we got foot, we got awesome footage of him before from, the yeah, started. Yeah, from at the same spot. Um, tried to find them again, different spots. It took me like two years to land that spot. And so I had knocked on every single door around there. And that deer was probably one of the biggest typicals I think we've ever seen. Yeah. It, it could have been the Georgia typical record if he'd gone down, I think. If he'd broke, well, he didn't, he, what he, he had, had a split, he had a split two? too. Yeah. I was, I mean, I was, I was seriously like. Just break it off. Uh, yes. <laughs> if Kendall had killed that deer, I kind of wanted to like run ahead of you guys with just like a, <laughs> a hammer and just like knock the split G2 off so he'd score better as a typical. Because he was all over that same yeah, record. So sure. come October, I think it was October 24th at one of my spots where he was coming in nocturnal all the time. Last picture I ever got of him. He vanished. Don't know if he get relocated, got killed whatever and just yeah one of those deer that will always haunt me um but never found out what happened to him never knew that's the another comment if anybody ever (laughs) did get this deer please contact us i would love to see this deer again just mind-blowing how big that deer was yeah see at least on the tyson thing i was able to get closure that i knew what happened you that was that (laughs) was just total just poof mystery but you know during the rut sometimes these deer run 10 miles and they can't find their way back and they just they're set up somewhere else so he could have been knows? hit by a car and oh, yeah. someone just took yeah. him home it's like oh yeah. this is cool but yeah. why does it always have to happen when he's just daylighting and daylighting and daylighting and you're like on him you're right there and multiple yeah. times when we were in the blind I, was, I guess the first few days of the season yeah all yeah. every single one of his running his running buddies would come in. in but it's almost like he literally knew they, we were there and he like would come in right after we left yeah, they, he, 
what these like big mature bucks do is they let their running buddies go in first, yeah. and then they stay back and they watch their body language. And if those deer lift their head up one time, yeah. they're just like, it's like uh, something's off. They yeah, just won't come in. in. Yeah, and that no, that did happen at least three different times. Yeah, I don't know. Story that one hurts. That's nine lives. Mm. Mm. Who's next? Well, you want to go? You want me to go? I don't care. Good. I'm gonna go with. Nobody knows about this deer out there at all. Like we we never filmed this deer, nothing. Um, and I, dude, the amount of time that I invested in this deer was it makes me want to puke even thinking about it. The deer was I don't know what you're talking. Yeah, about. I don't it's know. It's Tennessee, the uh, 190, uh, the 190 okay. from I think two seasons ago, and I was driving four hours like weekly just to get spots, new cameras, just like doing everything I possibly could to get on this deer. And he was a mega giant. Uh, no doubt. So, I mean, it, it, mainframe nine, just trash everywhere. I, honestly, in velvet, he probably was pushing 200. For sure. Story of this deer was, he was living on a farm, three, 400 acres that was totally unhuntable. Uh, did everything I did could try to do to get permission there and they're just like even their closest family members they're like absolutely no hunting yeah so I was trying to get breadcrumbs and in Tennessee you can't bait so it's like we're trying to do micro food plots you can do minerals up there but it's like the odds of drawing a deer from his core area to your little breadcrumb is just like so far-fetched yeah but I knew where this deer was living like all the time knew what he was doing I was able to get a spot on one side of the road that was like kind of not 100% good, like prime. And then I got spot, a spot on the other side of the road and then I was getting them like all the time. So I do the micro food plot. Uh, it's Tennessee, it's the velvet season. And I was hunting another buck that was, I don't know, 30 minutes away. And I was kind of juggling like, do I hunt this deer? Do I hunt in the 190? Back and forth, back and forth. So I sat the 190 one day, saw like some, you know, some some deer, and then the other buck showed up. So I, I decided like flip, flip to flip it. Yeah. So the last day of the season of the Velvet weekend, I go sit the other deer, and the 190 showed up, up in front of my camera. And you, my had, food you hadn't plot. seen him in like a couple weeks, it, right? It, yeah, it had been a couple weeks since I'd seen him in the food plot. And it's like I can't remember. I remember the phone call. Where should I sit? Where should I sit? And I'm like, dude, well, I'm not telling you. Did you kill one that night though? I thought no, was no, I, yeah. didn't, I didn't kill one that year. That year, oh, okay, he didn't kill yeah. one. Yeah, and that, oh gosh, that still hurts so bad. <laughs> if I had just decided to just stick it out, yeah. I would have had a chance at it. it so and, and come to find maybe. out, there were multiple other people hunting. That there, yeah, all yeah. Of these deer people are hunting. So. Deer makes it through the velvet season. The spot I got, a neighbor actually walked back, found my food plot, found my camera, found my stand, freaked out, like freaked the whole neighborhood out. I ended up losing permission there. Karen. Yeah, Karen's got involved. I had another spot on the other side of this 300 acres. Same deal, but doing a micro food plot and stuff. And like he had never showed up there really in the summer. It was like when he breaks and starts doing his laps and stuff, there was does in there. I'm like, he's yeah. gonna show up here. So I had this micro food plot and I put a big mock scrape in the middle of it and I'm getting pictures of him mm. late September into October, always at night. Then fast forward, I'm like, I'm just like waiting for like this deer in daylight one time. And then I'm like, it's game on. I think it was November 4th, boom, he daylights in this scrape on this food plot and, I, and it was like, load up the truck, we're going. Drive up there, sat one sit. I think we saw him way off, uh, not 100% sure. We saw a really large buck kind of off in the distance through some stuff. And uh, I don't know. I, I hunted there for a few days, ne ended up never seeing the deer ever, ever again. And I don't know why he left. Maybe he caught on to me that I was hunting there and was just like, yeah, I'm on to you, buddy, I'm out. Never saw him there again, even late season. I'm, I'm putting feed out again, just like trying to get a picture of him after the season's done. Never saw the deer again. Following year, same deal at the spots. No sign of this deer. I was just like, okay, well he got killed by another hunter, hit by a car, you know, died of natural causes, something. 
He had a bunch of does at that spot too, right? Yeah, it like was like you were thinking like, oh, it's just a matter of time. It's yeah, gonna come right. One of these does comes into heat, like he's gonna come check it, and I was like, it's gonna be perfect. Fast forward to that next year, and sometime during the season, pictures start getting sent around. Jay was actually the one who texted me this picture yeah, of the 190, and he had gotten. We suspect he got EHD, and he actually went into someone's barn in their like horse corral and just died in the middle of their horse barn. Oh, they I just, thought someone shot him. Mm -mm, no, could, they suspect that, well, how wonky, I guess he would be having to act like walk inside of that place. Yeah. And when they looked at like the deer, they couldn't, they couldn't see find any, 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 of, any holes or anything that. like that. Was the, so. That was the first year, the, the year that you were on him, right? That was the next year. Really? Okay. So he disappeared that season I was hunting him. Just I just thought he was, had died of something. I got you. Then the picture starts circulating the next year, and he was probably every the next year. Big. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got you. Okay. Probably every bit as, as big as he was the first year. That one hurt because like the amount of time invested in that deer is mm -hmm. is really hard to fathom. Yeah, that was a big one. Well, it's yeah, finding the deer all the time you put into it, and then it doesn't come together. Yeah. Um, but there's also. Yeah. There's another story. And there is all like that's the thing that we do have going for us is we have multiple stories unfolding at any given time. You have to. Yeah. yeah. Because nine out of ten of them don't they don't pan yeah, out. Yeah, no doubt. So if you don't if you're not going into the season with like two or three shooters that you think you have patterned, then you're probably gonna be out of the game by the second week of the season. Yeah. This stuff happens. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that we were only allowed to do two, so y'all tell me which one you want me to do next. I don't know. You throw pick. a couple. I've got six by six, which we, we did. I did a video of, I guess, two years ago, three years ago, the Nashville buck. And then I got a couple others that I don't. We don't need to tell the whole story on, but we can throw up pictures real quick. Uh, back in 2014, Rooster. Do y'all remember him? Oh, oh yeah. Rooster. Yeah. Pro probably 180, maybe 170. So last year. I'll go ahead and say it. We know what happened to Rooster. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I don't care if it makes the guy mad or not. I was working at a business, at a company. My coworker was friends with this guy. The story of what happened to Rooster was this dude, and you know who you are, <laughs> was driving around in his mom's van at night through these neighborhoods, shining headlights around people's yards and stuff, shot this deer with a crossbow out of his mom's minivan, basically threw it on top of the car and drove it home, and it's Rooster, and it's mounted in his office. I think I, have a, I think I have a picture of Rooster shedding milk. You do. I, yeah. I saw the picture. Of, I, saw, I was digging through my phone yeah. last night. Yeah. So I I actually missed Rooster, I guess, two days before that guy poached him. And then the day after I missed him, I sat all day long in a, in a downpour. And he was bedded like 80 yards from me the entire day and never got up. And then never so saw him. So you him. watched him bedded down? Like you were just... Or well, you just knew he was there. I know. I got in the stand, and like an hour into the hunt, I just saw him. He was like bedded up on a hill, like in a laydown or something. I was this like, was oh, before shoot. filming, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Before filming. yeah. No, I, yeah, I remember that story. Now. And then just never, never heard anything. I mean, I don't think we found out that he got pushed until a year. It was later, years later. A few years yeah. later. Yeah. I'll, I'll throw another one in real quick. I never named the deer, but it was the one we thought of earlier. This deer was at a spot of mine, mainframe ten or nine, and just stickers everywhere. Yeah. And I was in college at the time, came back, checked my camera, or no, 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 this is what happened. I was in college. Pictures get sent around of this dead, crazy, non-typical, tangled in a bunch of vines. The story was- this is the Pistola one. The Pistola yeah. buck, yeah. <laughs> so the story was there was like a Hispanic worker uh, and he went back, and I don't think he spoke much English. He finds this buck tangled up in vines and it's sitting there struggling and so he said he pulled out his pistola and just boom shot it and then killed it and then I was like anyways I didn't I didn't know at the time I had the deer on the camera on my camera I kind of suspected where he was at pictures go around of this crazy non-typical buck I go back home check my camera he's daylighting in my, in my spot like all the time and I was just sitting there just like the days oh, before cell cams. yeah before cell cams and you actually had to go in there and you're like oh man I don't have time to go there or yeah. man I don't want to book her up that spot the old pistola buck yeah I think the Nashville buck is probably the one that we we should tell just because the six by six is on we have a full video of that give us yeah. a give us a 60 seconds or less. 60 seconds, six, six by six. six. He was at a spot that I had for a long time. I had that spot since like 2015, 16. Uh, killed Wilbury, big eight pointer out of there, um, and hunted a bunch of other big bucks. The six by six was in there 
for probably, I think I had like four years of pictures of him before the year that he blew up until like a two, 201, I think is what he ended up scoring. Uh, that deer was so wicked. He was, I don't even remember this deer. I'm trying to think. Nathan killed it. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nathan, oh, yeah. Nathan's yeah, okay. Never Our mind. Now I, now I know which one. Nathan, you're if you're about. watching, congrats, yeah. buddy. No hard feelings. Yeah. That's, Nathan's a good buddy of ours to kill this deer. So and, you, and as we're saying, as we're telling these stories, like these deer can get hit by a car, poached, killed by somebody. I'd much rather ten thousand things yeah, that can happen yeah. for a buddy to take a deer like that. Yeah, that's sure. a win for sure. So he that deer was like a I think he was a six by five when he was a two year old. I remember getting a picture and his frame is just like tiny, but just point just a wall of points. I was like, this deer is going to be something some, yeah. someday. And what's crazy about that area and a, really a lot of the areas that we hunt is. These deer could be just like typical 150, 140, 150 inch deer up until they're like five years old. And then there's that one year that it's just slow like, up. boom, yeah. just something happens and they just stack on extras and yeah. all sorts of stuff. And six by six, I think he was 150 inches the year before. That's and insane. he blew up into a 201. Put on over 50 inches in a year. He got he had a bunch of inlines on one side yeah. and just, I mean, he, he just grew all over. Same year I hunted Mr. Sparkles. I had them both on camera daylighting and decided to go hunt Mr. Sparkles first because he was consistent. Uh, ended up killing Mr. Sparkles, I guess, the third day of the season. And then went and started hunting the 6x6, which they had split up at this point. The 6x6 was like two miles away. And that was another one where it's like, I'm going to kill this deer. Like, he's showing up nonstop. My setup is perfect because I've hunted this spot for three years now, I so I, I know how to hunt it. I thought you were about to just go, boom, 190, in the first boom, 200, season. and yeah, the first, I'm like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> I think I, I was getting close to like 20 sits on him, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And Nathan at the time, he was he was going through work stuff or family stuff or something and just like wasn't able to get in the woods. Yeah. And so he, he actually wasn't hunting the deer, but he had a spot that was... A hundred yards from my yards, spot, maybe on the same trail. Was that the first time he went and sat? I think first sit. The first sit. It was sit first, of this sit. first sit. That's impressive. <laughs> That's when you know it's meant to be. <laughs> yeah. 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 So well anyway, done, Nathan. anyways, yeah. <laughs> running, but all of his running buddies are coming in like multiple, multiple times. I'm like, all right, here it is. It's, it's gonna happen. It's, it's, it's gonna happen. Going he was here last night. He was yeah. here yesterday. Like he's gonna come in again. He probably he was never watching his buddies. He was, you know, hundred yards out and was just like. Yeah. Ah. He was probably for sure in there. Just oh, he was, back. yeah, absolutely he was in there. Yeah. But, yeah, anyways, Nathan decided to get a wild hair and go sit one morning and came right in. He was the only, I think he said he was the only deer that came in and smoked him. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, some of these stories, it's just not meant to happen. Yeah. And that, it was some cool. of it's so meant to be and some yeah. of it's so not meant to be, for sure. And it's, it's cool to at least, like, be able to be a part of that story because we, he called us and, like, we were keeping in touch and stuff and... We were able to help recover the deer That's and everything. Right. So yeah, that yeah. was that was pretty awesome. But again, another two hundred. I still have not killed a two hundred. And you hunted two of them. I've hunted yeah two confirmed, and then I mean the backyard buck. I don't. I'll show you the backyard buck. <sighs> I remember you telling me like you left your window open one night. Yeah. And you were sleeping, and you're like, I hear him fighting another buck. Yep. He was back there fighting like this little eight pointer all the time. Just. Just kind of, I mean, not going hard, just like, but for an hour, like a couple hours, they'd just be back there. It, I, I, I remember it was like, you just stuck a camera out just back there. It's not like it was a good spot. It no, was just like, like a little. There's like no woods. Right. And this deer was like mostly coming around at night. And it was like, we don't know where he was coming from or anything like that. But Any idea if it got shot? Yeah. Or... Oh, he did. Yeah, oh, he got shot. That. Okay. Should I go into the Nashville, the Nashville one? Yeah. Okay. This is, this is a one of those sagas that still continues, which you might actually pick up on it this year. We'll see. Potentially. So let me get my years right because it's been like five years now. Okay, so back in 2018 was the first year that we branched out to Nashville. We, uh, we all split up to do like a door knocking campaign. You guys went together and Jay and I went together. Mm -hmm. Jay just found like the most obvious farm in, in all of Nashville, <laughs> like on a river, bean field, just like perfect. perfect. Goes yeah. and knocks on their door and gets permission. And it's like, what? Like there's hells, there's not other, other people that have hammered this place. Uh, but other people were hunting. Other, yeah, a couple farm. other people were hunting at the like time. Now there's like 20 people hunting it. But 
Uh, so this year, we never really gave him a name, but he was, I believe, a nine-pointer that first year. And that first night that we got that for him, he was out in the field. Mm -hmm. blasted we watched him, him walk filmed out. Filmed him and everything. Yeah. Watched him walk out. And Jay actually took a shot at that buck yep. the first year, spot and stalk, and missed mm -hmm. him. Yeah. Shot over hit the beans. Or, yeah, maybe hit the beans. I, uh, actually, he did go over his back, I think. Yeah, I mean, but trying to shoot into those beans again is, like, insane. Oh, yeah. Like, it's like shooting into a briar patch. So we... We've owned, or I guess me and Jay have only hunted that place in the velvet season. Because come regular season, there's a bunch of guys that go out there and hunt, and the beans and, get cut. And right And leaves, basically but, all the deer leave. So yeah. we just haven't really messed with it after those three days of velvet. So fast forward 2019, I'm the only one hunting the place, and this deer has blown up. He's got like this big, kind of like a da uh, inside dagger point coming off his beam. Uh, or no, it's, out, it's on the outside of his beam. And I don't know what, what y'all think he scored in Velvet, but two. He, he had to have been, Might have been right around two I, or with Velvet. Upper 190 is easy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just huge frame. Yeah. And this year at the farm, it was the, it's the only year besides this year, actually. So t 2019 was the first year. This current year is the, the only other year they planted corn. Mm -hmm. And actually, they also had a hip field that year. So I don't, something was like You were off hunting different. some marijuana down there. Yeah. And, uh, he was daylighting almost every day on like the most killable spot on the farm. Like the week leading up to the velvet season, I put a bunch of time and effort in there and I'm like, okay, like it's gonna happen. He's he's here, he's walking this wood line like every day. And I think it was two days before the season started, the corn turned yellow and it just threw like everything out of loop. He went in there and started eating on it. Uh, yeah, I guess that's what happened. He just went in there and just never came out and didn't never saw that deer again uh, that year. I I kind of hopped back and forth between that bottom hip field and that upper like middle section of the corn and just never never saw him. So fast forward the next year, he this year's already I think the first year that we we got that farm this year was old. Like he's mm -hmm. a very he was the most mature buck out there. Mm -hmm. So fast forward the next year 2020 he goes downhill and turns into a seven pointer. But a, I mean, a big, heavy, so a huge deer. giant. Bo I mean, this deer is 300 pounds. He's got to be. His tracks are just massive. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting to figure out this farm a little bit. Like, it's a very difficult farm to hunt the way that it sets up. Yeah. Because there's just a, it's a 200 acre bean field on a river with just a thin strip of woods around the entire thing. And the like, the prevailing winds there just make it yeah. very Almost difficult impossible. to get in there. Yeah. And the and the deer, how they use the field it depends what the wind is but they just hop back and forth depending on the wind to where you can't come in behind them so i was literally or they, or they just literally live or in the stay in the middle yeah, they'll get up and, feet, the and they would literally will lay back down yeah. yeah so i was kayaking like a mile down the river downstream and upstream every single sit to get to my stand in this like ditch halfway towards the back of the field and that year I think there was two encounters that I had. Uh, what would happen was I'd, I'd see, I'd spot him from the stand. He'd be somewhat close. I'd get down and try to cut him off and try to do a spot and stalk, and got extremely close multiple times, which is it just never happened. Like this, again, deer like that have six cents. They're coming in and then they just decide to pop out, like bump out into the field and go mm -hmm. around. Anyways, next year, uh, I think he's a pretty sure. He was a seven pointer again, again next yeah. year. He's just so old. It, did, it all is I like think he's just like yeah. was on the decline big time. I honestly can't even remember which years. I think both both years he was a seven. I had in really close encounters, and then uh, two years ago was the last year I hunted. I didn't hunt last year. He turned into like a one side was I think five, and then the other side is just like a main beam. Yeah. And I mean that deer is probably still out there on the farm. It's just, and it's, it's probably like 15 impossible, years impossible old. to kill. Him. <laughs> yeah. And, and and no telling how old though. Yeah, yeah. I mean he's gotta be over ten yeah. for sure. Yeah. So you're getting a crack at the uh, farm this year. Potentially. Yeah. It's planted in corn, so I may or may not. I was hoping it was gonna be in beans. May or may not hunt it, but we'll see. Yeah. I think that's it. I think that's it. Any other stories? All I can remember. I'm sure there's others. Uh, there's a bunch more. I didn't even remember that I'd, I almost killed the Poseidon. I know, I know. I, know. Cups, I, re I remember this Thanks stuff. for opening the hold of the <laughs> Yeah, <right? laughs> We're, we're going to go cry the rest of the day. No. Would, you, uh, would you mind closing us out just the same way that you opened it up? No, Top no, five? No, 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 no. you got to go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Put the sunglasses on.
Top five deer we didn't kill. 